Hello, hello, Blake Hart here today talking about how do you become a sole proprietor? So I have some business videos that have been out for a little while now and I'm getting a lot of comments on them that they're helpful, which is awesome. So thank you for watching those. I'll actually include a card up here to go to the playlist for those videos, um, as well as at the end of this video, uh, an area for you to click to go visit the playlist for that. Uh, the question again, how do you become a sole proprietor comes up a lot because it seems too easy, right? If something seems too easy, there seems to be um, just some like confusion about it because why is it so easy? And there are a few steps. So I wanted to just sort of talk about number one, you know, why would you be a sole proprietor versus an LLC? Because that's a really big question that comes up. And then two, like, how do you become a sole proprietor? Like, what steps, what hoops do you have to jump through to do that? Because it's not really hard. And I really want to educate you guys so that you have the information you need going into this to feel confident that you can start your business and really concentrate on building that business and not all this other stuff that gets a little overwhelming, right? So for a sole proprietor, I mean, the reason you're going to become a sole proprietor is because you're just starting out your business. You don't necessarily have or want to spend the thousand dollars on average, could be more, could be less, depending on what state you're located in, to become an LLC, a limited liability corporation. Of course, there's absolutely benefits with being an LLC. But if you don't know if your business is going to be successful yet or how much you're going to make, it may not be the best decision to like just jump right into spending, you know, your savings on that. Maybe you should be spending that that money on something that's going to help you begin to build your business like equipment, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, so a sole proprietor, it's it's easy to set it up. It's it's free. I mean, there's really not a lot of cost involved. Um, we'll talk about a few things, but it's very minimal amount of money. And when you file your income taxes, it's pretty easy. You're going to file a schedule. Schedule C and it's a part of your personal income tax return that you file. So there's no additional like heavy duty filing to be doing for taxes and you still get the benefits of being able to offset, you know, any income you may have from your day job, you know, with the expenses that you incur in building your new business. Um, you know, some of the cons though are you're taking on liability, right? You, your business that you're creating is one in the same of you. So any kind of uh, lawsuits, let's say that come up, you could find that your personal assets. So if you have a house, you know, car, bank account, your personal assets could be drawn upon uh, to fulfill, you know, those obligations. And you know, that seal isn't a done deal if you have an LLC either. Um, so I don't know. I think sometimes people feel a little bit more protected than they should when they create an LLC. Um, but, uh, you know, business bankruptcy means personal bankruptcy. It's one and the same. And sometimes people also feel like, you know, an LLC is more professional. But the truth is, like, over 70% of businesses in the United States actually operate as sole proprietors. So you shouldn't feel like you're not professional being a sole proprietor. And there's still some things that you need to do that equate to being professional when you set up uh, a sole proprietorship. So let's take a look at those. This is sort of the how to start it. Um, again, looks like there's a lot of text here, but it's really not that that difficult. So I'm going to walk you through this so that you feel comfortable and confident that you can do it for yourself. So first things first, depending on what business you're going into, you may decide to have a business name that is different than your personal name, your legal name, you know, your government name that was issued to you. And that could be in various types of businesses as a producer, as a DJ, uh, or, you know, if you're starting some other type of business. Now, the issue is, is that you are going to need to get a DBA, which is a doing business as a certificate from your locality. And that could be your city. It could be your county. Uh, it, it varies from state to state. So I can't give you specifics. But and this is for the United States, since that's where I am. Um, but most places have uh, small business uh, offices, right, where you can actually call in your city and you can get information and say, how, where do I go for a DBA? What do I need to do? or Google it, right? And generally it may be, let's say your your county um, or your city municipality has like offices there. You would go there, fill out some paperwork. You know, you, let's say it's usually around 25, 50 bucks. It's not a lot. You fill out the paperwork and they issue this DBA to you. And the idea is, is that now, you know, your name may be Paula Smith, but you are getting this DPA that says, um, you know, Paula Smith doing business as 
A, B, C, D, J, or whatever it is. I never make up the best best words for these. Um, and that's a way for, you know, the town, the county, the state to be able to associate this name with this business because you're out there doing business and taking money from people. And this is what makes you professional in the sense that you're getting this DBA. Depending on what you are doing and where you are, you may also need a business permit, like a license. Uh, you know, this again varies from place to place and depends on what your business is. Some businesses may not need a permit or license while others do need it. Now you will, if required, you, you need a DBA if you're going to open a business banking account with this name, ABCDJ. Uh, that's going to be required because people are going to write checks to ABC DJ. They're not going to write checks to Paula Smith. They're going to be paying you with your business name. Um, so you need to make sure you open up a business banking account. Number one, to cash your checks. I know like, yeah, PayPal, Venmo, there's a lot of different ways people are getting paid nowadays. You know, people aren't necessarily handing over checks, but you know, really this, you need to have a banking account to be able to like put this money into, and this is how you're going to do it. Um, so yeah, so you're going to do that and you'll be set to go. You should keep your personal funds separate from your business funds because that's just good business, right? You'll be able to make more sense of your money. You'll know what you have, what you don't have. Uh, it's just start that way. I'm going to tell you it will save you a lot of headaches, okay? Because you just, you need to be known where this money is coming in, where it's going, because that's going to be important for your taxes as well. Um, if you are choosing a business name, right, you're not going to do it under your government name, you want to do, do choose a business name, you might want to check it out with the trademark office to see if anybody has that name already. If it is important to you that you want to be able to trademark that business name, that is not important to some people, right? Um, there are popular names you can probably think of that in each major city, there may be a business with that same exact name, right? Um you know, it's just there are some common businesses, business names that are everywhere and you're not going to be able to trademark that. It doesn't mean you can't, you can still have that as your business name, but you won't be able to trademark that name for yourself. So I see the question may come up that you, you know, you want to be a sole proprietor, but you don't want to have a name that's different than your own name. You're just going to be yourself. And that's fine. If you do want to do that, to be able to, again, open a business checking account, you will need a DBA. Uh, sometimes people who are working under their own names, and if you don't need a business license or you don't need anything, you can operate under your own name, have two bank accounts, be sure you're keeping your business money separate from your personal money. Uh, again, that's just all really good record keeping. The other thing you're going to want to do is get an EIN. All right, this is an employee identification number. And the reason you're going to want to do this, and it's free, you do it at the IRS website, uh, easy, easy is because you don't want to use your social security number. So depending on the type of work you're doing, you may find that you get issued a 1099 at the end of the, the tax year. And this is basically if you're doing contract work or, or numerous other things, you're considered a contractor. And this needs to be done by the person hiring you. It's required if they pay you over a certain amount of money that they do this. And the reason is, is because the IRS wants to get reports of income that is being earned by people like you. So you're gonna to have to give your social security number or an EIN number and it's just better to be using that EIN number so you don't have to throw your social security number around. Um, again, it's free, it's easy, just do it. Uh, you'll be happy that you did that. If you are a DJ, you wanna definitely consider as a sole proprietor or even if you're an LLC, whatever you are, get insurance, get liability insurance. It will be required in most instances. If you are gonna be going to DJ a wedding or an event, they're gonna ask you for your certificate of insurance to show that if God forbid your speaker falls on somebody, somebody gets electrocuted, whatever happens, the venue will have some protection because you caused it and your insurance is going to foot the bill for that. Uh, super, super important. I can't emphasize it enough. Uh, again, not required for all types of businesses, but if you are dealing with a situation where you you could hurt someone, really get this. It's, 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 it's worth it or you'll need it. Um, and getting to taxes, Schedule C. This is a part of your personal income taxes. It 
is just an additional form that you include. So if you're an LLC, you have to file different paperwork actually each year. Um, your taxes get filed a little bit of a different way. Um, not so, so difficult, but it's just a lot easier when you're a sole proprietor and you're doing a Schedule C. So these aren't, you know, the only benefits and risks of each of these different ways to operate. I'm just laying it out here because I feel for most people starting a business, being a sole proprietor is a really good choice because it doesn't cost much and it's easy. It doesn't um, create that same hurdle that like an LLC has or having an LLC or paying for an LLC. And truly, unless you're earning like, I don't know, at least $10,000 a year in your business, I feel like that's when you get to the point of, okay, there's more money at stake here. I'm doing more business. Um, I really want to get an LLC now. It makes sense. But if you're just starting out and you've sold like a thousand dollars worth of, you know, making beats or you DJ one event or whatever, like you just need to get just a little bit more money under your belt and uh, a little more momentum. I think until you say, hey, yeah, I'm ready for that LLC. Now I'm gonna do another video about establishing an LLC because nowadays that isn't as hard to do. There are a lot of companies out there that are do it for me type of companies. Uh, you pay them, they'll do it. They'll set up the LLC, all the paperwork, where you need to uh, file in your local, depending on where your business is located, they'll do the research, know what you need to do, do it for you. And then on a yearly basis, they'll keep up with those filings. Because once you, you do start an LLC, it is not just like a one and done thing. It is a continuous uh, type of thing to maintain that LLC each year with the state and the paperwork you need to do. But that's a whole nother video. I hope that this video was helpful for you on being a sole proprietor. It's really nothing to be scared of. You just get out there, you do it. There's a few things you do, you're done, you're in business, you're a sole proprietor. And then at the end of the year, you file your income taxes, do your schedule C, and that's you, you're in business, you've got a business. Uh, so thank you for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit it now, hit the notification bell so that you'll find out each time I have a new video and I'm going to try to put an emphasis on doing some more business videos because I know that this is helpful for people. There's not a lot of content out there um, specifically for uh, creators, musicians, independent artists, DJs, uh, producers, those types of people. And so I'm going to try to like really cater this a little bit more towards you guys going forward. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.